Hey y'all, welcome to The Happier Attorney, where we talk about how you can create your practice that uh, fits you and earn the money that you're capable of earning while not ever having to overwork and how to use flat fees and just have a great life and be a happier attorney. So this month we are talking about money and if you haven't looked at the last three videos, I would suggest that you do so, so that you know what we're talking about in week four. And today we are talking about the tools. Oh, yay, yay, finally we got to the tools. Um, but again, until you fix the inside and get to the root of why you're doing what you're doing with money, you know, the tools are just going to be a band-aid. So please do that work. So I am not a financial professional. I will tell you what has worked for me what didn't work for me <laughs> and not to do those things and what has worked for me. So uh, I have been there when I got an unexpected tax bill because I had underestimated my taxes. And yes, I had an accountant and again, we're taking 100% responsibility. It wasn't my accountant's job to look at my books every month and go, hey, you know what? We need to bump that up. You're making more money, okay? That was mine. So when you get a call from your accountant on um, the 13th of April saying you owe $15,000 in two days, it's not a pleasant experience, okay? And um, there are many attorneys who have gotten that call. So um, here are some of the things that I do now and I wish that I would have done that. So first off, you need to have some emergency savings. If anything of the 2020 should have shown us, you've got to have some emergency savings, at least three to 5K. Now, is three to 5K really going to do much? No, but it will you know, buy you a month of rent or a mortgage. It will keep food on the table. It will keep the lights on. It buys you enough time to bring some more money in. So. It, and it does, it's not a lot of money actually, three to 5K, and you know how many attorneys don't have it? A lot. So start there, and if you need to sell some stuff, sell some stuff, I'm not kidding. It's three to $5,000, you can do this, okay? You, you, you just spent how much on law school, even if you went a long time ago? Don't overestimate this, it's three to $5,000. Just get it in there, fast. My old way was, far too high of overhead and it never left anything for me. I was going to save, I was going to pay myself when. When I got that debt paid off, when I got more clients, when I got higher paying clients, when, 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 when. And that did not work for me. There's never gonna be money left over, okay? It's kind of like the same with time. If you say, oh, I'll exercise when I have the time, guess what, you're never gonna have the time. Same thing with the money. You're never going to have it left over. So if I could tell, and I knew this intellectually, I'd been told, but I was stubborn. And I thought I could work my way out of it and outsmart my way, okay? Don't do that. So if I could tell 29, 30 year old Brita anything, it would be, don't try and be smart about this, too smart about it, okay? Do what your mama told you to do from the beginning. And that is every dollar, every single dollar that comes in, 15% automatically goes into a savings account for taxes. That way you will never have a tax issue. Or even if you do, it's, it's gonna be minimal. 15% of your gross should really cover just about anything, okay? Automatic. So in your head, when somebody pays you $10,000, you're not thinking, oh, I just made $10,000. No, 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 you did not just make $10,000. Not even close. But that's how I used to think until I just started automatically. So 15% tax automatically, 10% into retirement. I have known so many older attorneys who have practiced 30 years, 40 years, who are living on social security. I'm not kidding. You think you have time. You think you'll catch up later and it doesn't happen. You have to make that change now. And you're like, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. You can't afford not to. So if that means you don't hire staff, if that means that you work from home for a, a while longer, if that means 
that you don't buy a house right away or you live in a smaller house, whatever, these are your, this is your foundation and it has to be solid or you keep building, you keep building and at some point it's gonna topple. Ask me how I know. And it's not pretty when it topples and then you really feel stupid. You really feel like a failure, okay? So 10% in retirement, 5% in emergency savings or a little bit more. Again, this is just small, consistent steps. So when you have a slow month, you're okay. When something like 2020 happens, you're okay. You have that cushion. Then 30 to 40% in owner pay, your pay. Wow, if, the, if I could have gotten this through my head early on, that I need to get paid from day one. Every dollar that comes in, I need to get paid. It is really demoralizing when you have had your own practice for a number of years and you have nothing to show for it other than great work and blah, blah, blah. But when you don't have financial anything to show for it, it's really demoralizing. Okay. So 30 to 40%, that's your pay. And it might feel like it's too much, especially when you're starting out and you're like, oh, yeah, but all of the things that I need to buy and invest in and we'll get there. But you have to show yourself that you are worth, why are you doing this? Pay yourself 30 to 40%. Then that leaves 30 to 40% for your overhead. What that does also is it forces you to be really careful and examine your expenses because out of $10,000, you only have three or four for your overhead. And that's all you have to spend. So that might mean that you cut out things, that you go slower, that you do guerrilla marketing instead of paid, whatever. But it really forces you to examine what your expenses are and be far more careful with your expenses. Because otherwise, you just pay all of this and then there's nothing left over to pay you or it's slim pickings. And that's what it feels like. It feels like you're getting the crumbs that are left over. And it doesn't, that doesn't feel good. And again, if you do this system where every dollar that comes in, 15% tax, 10% retirement, 5% emergency savings, 30 to 40 owner pay, and the rest is what you have to spend on your practice, it forces you also, A, you'll never have a tax bill. You'll have emergency savings. You will be getting paid. And you'll be very careful about your expenses. It also forces you to think differently about what you need to do in order to invest in your practice. So say you want a larger office or you want to hire staff or you want to invest in your practice in coaching or courses, whatever, okay? This forces, this method forces you to say, okay, so I need more money. That's the bottom line, I need more money. So that means I need to make more money. So your default then is, making more money, not just, oh, I need to cut expenses. It's, it's a little switch in your head, but it's pretty huge because my old default was, ooh, things are tight. I need, what, what can I cut? What can I cut? And now my default is, you know what? Actually, things are pretty good. Like my expenses are where they are supposed to be. And if I want my expenses to increase, then I need to increase my revenue. How do I do that? Not I can't do that. How can I do that? So it forces you to look at expanding the pot, okay? And it, it might take a little bit of getting used to to be taking money and paying yourself, okay? It, it can feel like, oh, that's too much. I'm taking away from the business. Just remember, it's your money. It's your business. And, you know, you don't have to spend it. It can go in a savings account. And if the business needs to borrow money later on, you can. But still get in the habit of doing that. And... Yes, invest in your practice. When you get things going, your goal really should be investing about 10% in your practice. And what does that mean? That means your practice management and your personal development. Your practice development, your personal development. That means coaching, that means courses, that means all of the things that work on you, really. And 10% might seem like a lot, I can tell you, the really successful business people out there, the go-getters, they invest 10%. When they're making 
10 million dollars a year they're investing a million on their personal development and their practice i'm not kidding that's how they get exponentially out there so go slow but really have the goal of you're going to have to invest in your practice and kind of set it at 10 percent in the meantime there are a lot of free and very cheap resources. Books are about as cheap as they come and there are lots of free, free resources. So, but here's the clip. None of those resources will work if you don't use them, if you don't put them into practice and do them consistently, okay? So just try the system for three months. See how it feels. How do you like it? It might feel uncomfortable and see how much you're able to save. See how much it forces you to look at your overhead and see what needs to be cut, what you need to do. If you can only spend 30 to 40% of your gross on your overhead, what does that mean? So those are the tools that have helped me. And it's amazing how fast the savings grow. It's amazing when you look at your tax account and know, <laughs> Not only is there never going to be a problem here, but you know, at the end of the year, I can actually probably give myself a bonus. It's an amazing feeling to get a good paycheck every two weeks. It makes you want to keep doing it. <laughs> so again, the tools, every dollar that comes in, 15% tax, 10% retirement, 5% emergency savings, 30 to 40% owner compensation, 30 to 40% overhead. It's pretty simple and hard to do. But those who do it, you will be so far ahead of the game. So far ahead of the game. And don't listen to the nonsense of you need to spend more than 30 to 40% on your practice for overhead. No, you don't. Figure out how to do it. Figure out how you can run your practice on that amount. And you can, you can. If you have gotten any value out of this video or this series, I would ask you to like, subscribe, share, join Attorneys and Flat Fees on Facebook. And if you want any information about working with me or my work, click on the link below and go to breedalong.com and you can learn all about other resources and how you can be a happier attorney. So take care.